Hello truckers, welcome back to American Truck Simulator with Realistic Economy. We are in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we are here to pick up some live cattle, apparently. And this is going to be an external contract, and you're probably wondering, how are you doing that? Uh, we don't have our trailer anymore. Our trailer is gonzo. Uh, I put the trailer into the Alamoso garage in Southern Colorado. Where is this? Uh, it says it's behind me somewhere. Oh, there it is. There it is. So we are taking some live cattle uh, to Rollins, Wyoming, I do believe. So what I was looking at just before I logged on is I, I just noticed my Steam achievements. I was looking at those. I'm like, hmm, I got to start knocking some of these off, I think. And where we're at, this is kind of one of them, delivering live cattle on time, no penalties, and no damage. Uh, we're not lined up right. And um, I got to do 10 of them, apparently. So hopefully this will be one of them. But I figured it was time to give up the trailer anyways. We had it for a good run and let our workers try to get some money on the trailer. I picked Alamosa because out of that garage... They tend to go to North Carolina a lot, so if they go a long run in our own trailer, they should make a good amount of money that way. And by also getting rid of the trailer, this also allows us to start taking cargo that we haven't really been taking recently. So with external contracts, if you remember, um, yeah, no Speedy Gonzalez here. We can only do 65 miles an hour max. But you can see this first delivery is not that far. And then let's go from there. I'm not really sure where to go after that. We'll just check it on out. Just got to rem remember, though, if I take external contracts, got to make sure I finish that in this episode. Because that's by, I got to finish it in real time, not game time. So I want to make sure I take this slow. No speeding, no accidents, no nothing. And see if we get at least one mark off the cattle deliveries. Plenty of other achievements I need to get to anyways, but uh, got to start somewhere. And for me, sometimes playing games, doing the achievements, uh, just adds a little bit uh, more spice to it to me. Let's me, uh, keep me keep me more engaged into it. And if I want any time, I can always take back either trailer that we have. Uh, we do have the Little Boy, which uh, that was a while ago that we got that. That's in Denver, and that's always being used. We'll let someone else take the reefer trailer and let them enjoy it. Money-wise, we're doing all right. Of course, you know, a few episodes ago, we upgraded the garage in Sacramento, I do believe it was. We were down to like $1,000. At one point, we're back up to almost thirty. get over in this lane over here Sorry, just paying really close attention to that uh, traffic pattern that we have here. Something that I have never seen uh, and am not used to. So, I was making sure I was doing it correctly. Don't want to take a wrong turn to start off this episode and uh, expand our journey for first thing this morning. Let's see. Not this one. Keep on going through. And then the next exit, we do a loopy loop. And the loop, loopy loop means uh, we get on another interstate. I think we're getting back on the I-80 westbound is what we're doing. Alright, just to confirm where we're going. Uh, yeah, we are going to Rollins. Rollins, Wyoming. 
should not have no trouble getting there. And then uh, where we go from there, like I said, uh, we'll just see what's available available for cargo. I'll probably have to do a jump cut. Because it took me a while just to find this kind of cargo. I was like, okay, what can I do to help me on out here? And I saw live cattle. I'm like, yep, that's, we'll, we'll do live cattle to start today. A short little journey. And now that we don't have our own trailer, we're back to driving from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Because we're not loading, unloading. So that saves 50 minutes every time we load unload. Let's scooch back on over. Of course, we are going uphill before we get to Lincoln Monument. Then it's all downhill to Laramie. Uh, I didn't even see. How much am I getting paid for this? Actually, that's not bad for a short little trot of 11-11 uh, is what, was, was what we're going to get paid here. If I don't screw anything up. So I've been kind of asked a, a few times by a few different amount of people at this point of uh, wanting to, me to get into ETS2 again and starting a similar series. Uh, as for now, I'm just going to say that's uh, you know, it's not. I don't have a plan to do that anytime soon. Um, I do have a couple of ideas coming to the channel here. I don't want to say soon, but within the next month or so. And uh, that's just going to be adding more videos per day. So I don't know if I'll have time to do that. Right now doing this is uh, this trucking series. It's probably as much as I want to do. I don't think I need to get the ETS-2 at this time. Not to say I won't in the future, but as for current plans, no, I don't think so. And if you think my driving is bad here in ATS, wait until I get to ETS 2. Not really remembering where the cities are. I was getting pretty good at it uh, for, for a while. But my long-term memory at this point, because like I said, uh, when e ATS came out, ETS 2 kind of got really put on the back burner and forgotten about. So that's been almost six years at this point. I mean, obviously, if I was driving around, it's like, hey, you got to go to Paris. I'm like, well, I kind of know where that is and, and and those type of cities. But for the most part, yeah, I'm not going to remember all the routes. I, I won't have all the DLC since that, you know, I left the game behind. So, yeah, it would just be kind of weird for me at first. Not going to say I won't dive in ETS 2 in the future. Always a possibility. Right now, I think we'll just stick to, definitely stick to ATS and get this loan paid off. That's that's our goal here at this point. In the beginning, it was survive, uh, which we did, <laughs> and now here we are, slowly paying off our loans. Six thousand dollars a day at a time, just uh, one and three quarter million dollars to go. The only thing I will try to do when we get to Rollins and drop this off is I try not to go back the same direction that we came from in the same episode. But we'll see what the, what the offers are when we get there. I did want to look into, I just saw it before I started uh, recording here logged in 
that they have some game footage from the Montana map. I did want to kind of take a peek at it. I don't want to try to look into it too much because when it comes out, it's pretty obvious I want to get it. So when I drive it the first time, I kind of want to see it myself as I'm driving. Rather than uh, knowing kind of what's coming up, I just want to drive around as I'm recording. And you kind of get my first reaction to it. I was actually kind of shocked though, like I said, I went through my Steam achievements and I realized I have not visited every city in Idaho. That's just like the, one of the things I do when the map first comes out. It's like, oh, we need to go to this city, we need to go to that city. Uh, Idaho is one of those uh, maps, I think I vis visited some cities on one profile and some on this profile, so yeah, I need to knock those off, so I was looking at the cities myself. I got about 25 achievements I have not completed yet in ATS. So, And then, of course, when Texas and Montana come along, it's usually about maybe eight achievements per each uh, state that comes out. Roughly around there. This uh, billboard for SpaceX and Mars, kind of interesting. Uh, how many more miles? 41 miles. I'm trying to figure out if I want to pass this car in front of me. Since I can only do 65 max, it may take me a little while, so I'm hoping I can get around this SUV before my exit comes up. There's always a way to slow AI traffic. <laughs> You can kind of scare the bejesus out of them if you if it just uh, creep to the side a little bit. Kind of get in their lane and they'll they'll stop pretty darn quick. You don't have to hit them. You just kind of merge into their lane a little bit. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll touch the brakes pretty darn good. I'm going to try not to do that. Unless it's extremely necessary. It's Heinz Craft I'm bringing this to, right? Or Craft Heinz, Heinz Craft, either way. May not be this episode, but it could be the next episode that we actually get another level. This is our exit, apparently. Got to be careful because this uh, part of the achievement, no fines, so speeding would be a fine. Accidents and it got to be on time. I don't want to be 10 miles out and get a speeding ticket. Although it says I got to deliver them to a live auction, so I don't know if this is what we're doing here. I was going to go in behind you, but since you're going to stop, I guess I'll go in front of you. Well... I'm not going to ask what that problem might be in that building, but uh, there's an ambulance there. Only 30 miles an hour down through here, so you just got to be a little bit careful. Uh, 
Well, this might be where there's a live auction. Drive a little bit slower on the dirt. I got some horses running around. And you guys want it delivered. Alright, I got gotcha, you, I think. That's an interesting piece of cargo right there. All right, uh, let's put this in R1. Well, at first, I'll be able to see where I'm backing up. Then I'll have to do a little bit of a blind side parking. So I do want to take it kind of slow. Oh, uh, wait, where's my zoom in button? Seems to be working out rather well. There, not too bad. Park and brake, turn off the engine, and decouple. Synchronizing. There we go, all set. Yeah, we're not going to get to level 29 this episode. Uh, continue. So we're in Rollins. I'm going to go ahead and search for some, some cargo to take. And uh, we'll see where we're going next. Well, after a quick look, that does not count as delivering cattle to a live auction. So I don't know exactly um, what that entails. So I'll have to look into it. Uh, but I did find something for us to take right from here. Let me go ahead and hitch on up to this here. And I'll show you exactly where we're going in just a moment. So we are taking 43,000 pounds of pork to Ketchum, Idaho. Uh, that's a city I have not been to yet in Idaho. So uh, that is where we're going. Needs to be there... Uh, today is a Monday, and it needs to be there on a Tuesday, and it needs to be there at 9 a.m. Uh, it's about an eight-hour trip. I have seven hours left in today, so if I get up tomorrow at 6, in theory, I should be there like 7 o'clock in the morning, so I should be able to do it, um, but who knows? If I pick up time today, we can get there, and I can pick up some time because this is not an external contract. This is a, just a regular freight job, so uh, we can put the hammer down if we want. Uh, looks like GPS is taking me through the dirt roads here. And as you can see, uh, we're getting paid seventeen twelve for the job. So I think when we get to Idaho, we're going to go ahead and cruise, try to get the deliveries to the cities we have not been to yet. And uh, get that check mark off my list. I mean, we've been through Idaho here and there. But now I think uh, once I get over there, because we're, we're going to be almost like smack dab right in the middle of Idaho. Alright, give me do some asphalt, please. This is why sometimes trusting your GPS to bring you somewhere sometimes isn't the best option. Yeah, so right now, of course, our quitting time is at 5 o'clock, and right now it's scheduled to get there at 7. I don't think I'll make up to two hours, but hopefully we do well enough that uh, we won't have to do some, some crunching times tomorrow. So basically, if I can uh, get there with uh, the, the two hours left to go, we're, we're more than okay. We do 
have a lot of pork back there, 43,000 pounds of pork. And it's not that big of a trailer either. It's kind of a, I don't want to say a short, uh, short box. It seems like it is. And I got to try to remember at the end of our day, I want to go back into our trailer manager and see if one of our three drivers picked up that trailer in Alamoso, Colorado. I think, yeah, there's only three trucks in that garage. Of course, what will have, have to happen is one of the drivers will have to return. Okay, I was like, what the heck is that about? Yeah, I forgot about your loan payment there for a moment. Um, yeah, one of our drivers is going to have to return from a delivery in order to pick up the trailer. Alright, speed limit is 75. I think we're going to try to do 78. Well, I shouldn't say try to. Alright, speed limit is 80. So we'll probably just do 80. No need to go any faster than that. Especially when you got 43,000 pounds of pork following you. Didn't really look at the GPS to see what types of roads we'll be taking. But right now we are on a beautiful interstate. I don't know which one this one is. I don't think we're on the I-80 anymore, but we could be. I can actually feel that weight behind there. It's making my trailer rock quite a bit. Well, the trailer must be rocking quite a bit because I'm the way I'm taking the corners at higher speeds, making my truck rock a little bit as well. Sometimes it's just better to stay in the lane that you were in. I knew I was going to be passing that truck eventually. I probably should have stayed in the left lane instead of keep switching lanes. Uh, let's see, speed limit's only 55 through here. Right, we'll slow down. Ish. Yes, we are still actually on the I-80 westbound. And when it gets to be about that 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I've got to remind myself to go ahead and check for our beautiful rest area for us to stop at, hopefully with uh, some fuel to get.
kind of nice to be able to do 80 on a highway and just breeze through the miles. Yeah, I think Northern Idaho has been a long time since I've been up there. Actually, I can't remember the last time we were in Northern Idaho. Every time I see those birds in the sky, at first they don't look like birds. I always think they're like planes or something like that. But then when they're not moving that far, I'm like, oh, those are the birds. Also, if you remember at the end of the last episode, um, yeah, that damage on the truck, that is just mostly tire wear. I think, we, I think it was at the end of the last episode we checked that. And we only had like two or three percent on the engine and chassis and such. Through all the miles that we put on this International 9900i. It's mostly tire wear. And I think we're going to try to see, as long as I don't get to a major accident where I need to repair the tranny or the engine or something like that. I think we're going to try to keep on going and we pull into way stations until they... I mean, I would kind of like to see what it's like to get a fine. I got told that that's a possibility once you get enough wear down on your vehicle. But I do believe we got up to about 35, 38% on the Volvo that we had way back when. And we never got a fine then. Speaking of a way station, there's one right there, but we're getting the green light. Everyone is slowing down here quite a bit. Could be trucks coming out of the way station that had to merge in. Whoopsies, I kind of need to go off here. Hopefully this truck is going to... Yeah, we made it. I mean, definitely not the best way to do that, but uh, I wasn't paying attention to my GPS. Thinking, oh, we're just still going straight. And at the last second, it's like, no, no, no. And it always seems to happen when you're in the left lane passing a whole bunch of trucks. Ah, it looks like that truck was coming this way anyways. Or I forced them to, one or the other. Uh... Yeah, that was uh, not good at all. Being in the far left lane, it's like, yep, your exit's here. I would like to get back in that right lane right now, because it seems like we're not getting that much speed, so... Must be going uphill, but I keep getting traffic on the inside. I mean, we're slowly gaining speed. Good news is we are picking up our ETA time, so uh, right now we might just have like an hour and a half to do in the next day. Uh, there's a chopper up ahead, so there must be an accident up ahead. I just can't picture it's in our it's on our side of the interstate.
be a lot of traffic today. Didn't know we were going down to one lane, but we did. Just trying to figure out why that truck was slowing way down because he had to merge into my lane, saw me coming. And said, that guy's been driving like an idiot for the past five minutes. Uh, let's give him right away. Uh, nothing better than white concrete with white lines to show you where the lanes are. Uh, way station. That's got to be us. This might be the perfect time since, I, since I'm going to be stopped anyways. Or at least uh, hands-free for a moment. To go ahead and figure out where we might be stopping today. Alright, uh, before we go anywhere, so we weigh almost 80,000. Uh, I got two and a half hours left on my clock. Uh, how far is it to here? That's an hour, that's, that's almost two hours, so that's a possibility. Yeah, I'm not going to get to... That's three hours, that, yeah, that's too far. Um, so we'll have, probably have to stop right here. No fuel here, but we'll be fine on the fuel. So we'll just probably get done maybe a little bit early. But if that, when that checkpoint does come up, um, if I got like another 45 minutes on my clock, we probably can stretch it to the other checkpoint that I was looking at. It's nice to see my drivers actually bring in the cash. Of course, in the future, we'll have a few more drivers. Uh, let's see, we got about, what, three more garages to upgrade? Probably get ourselves a total of another maybe like eight, nine, ten drivers somewhere in there. Have a total of 25 to 30 drivers in all. But it's not just the, the driver is actually completing a load, it's actually uh, being a decent total, which at this point we can pretty much expect. We all remember the early days where they were just bringing in like $500, $800 at a time. Now it's a couple grand. So somewhere around 430 is when we should reach our checkpoint. What you see in the bottom of the screen, that is where we're going to get to our, that's our final destination, that's not where our checkpoint is. I'm not going to bother changing it over. Kind of know roughly where we expect it. construction zone, so we better tap the brakes. Alright, so we're in the lane that we need to be in. So the only thing about getting done a half hour early, that does leave an extra half hour I gotta add on for tomorrow for a drive time. So two hours and he needs to be there by nine. So when I start the morning, I would be expected to get there around eight, which leaves us about an hour. So I better not miss my exit, uh, better not miss a turn, and there better not be no detours. Hello, Idaho. Only 
and 70 in Idaho, so we'll just do 74, sounds good. Keep a good pace going. Yeah, so unless we reach our checkpoint in the next 20 minutes in game time, yeah, if, if we see our checkpoint by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I can stretch it, I think, to the other checkpoint by 5. But I don't see us getting that much time in that short amount of time that we have. Kind of interesting, I just realized we're hauling pork and I don't, is this a reefer trailer? Doesn't appear to be. Yeah, every time I get in this left lane, I get into trouble. What does that say? Information. It's a way station that I know we're staying at. Yeah, it must be coming up at the way station. Can I stretch it? I think he's going to. I mean, it's only 10 after 4, and I think it was just an extra 45 minutes to the other checkpoint. I mean, it's kind of late now. I'm already blowing past this thing, right? No, can we... Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're kind of blowing past it already. Uh, so, yeah, we want to... Ah, it says hour 12. All right, so now I'm going a little bit old. Oh, and I was supposed to stop at the way station. Uh, well, that's not going to happen. Um, whoopsies. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's a whole bunch of terrible right there. This has not been a good driving day for me. All right, so failed to visit the way station. I mean, the, the fine isn't bad. It's $360. It's not the greatest thing that we want to do. I know I just said we. I included you in part of that. Uh, I apologize, but you're watching this, so you're in. You're in this with me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to include you on that. Not going to blame you for it, but I'm going to include you on it. I mean, 360. That's not. It's not that expensive. It's not cheap. But it's not that expensive either. But it does cut into what? What are we making? Yeah. So I'm, now I'm going to be making like fourteen hundred on a trip. And of course, we got the cost of diesel fuel. I think I wasn't paying too much attention about the way station because I figured I was stopping there anyways. So it's like, well, I'll be stopping there, so I don't care if it's red or green. But then it, also my mind, it's like I was having two thoughts in my mind. One was like, you got to stop at the way station either way. And the other part of my brain was like, uh, yeah, but we can make it to the other part. So don't worry about the way station. All right. And that part of the brain won out. Oh, well. So 5.30, I think it's going to be now, is going to be our quitting time. Or actually, it's right here. So, yeah, 5 o'clock. So that's not too bad. Other than the fine of $360, was it? Well, 
well, the good thing is there is a hotel holiday in here. So instead of sleeping in my bed tonight, I can just go rent a room and actually take a shower. I might need one after driving that dirty today. So right now that leaves about an hour, 15 minute drive tomorrow. Where do I fuel up here is the question. Not there. And it's right here. Five eighty seven for diesel in Idaho. We do have a few more levels to go to put points in other things, and then the last thing we'll be putting points into is uh, saving on some fuel, so that'll help us out a little bit. Alright, so the sleeping triggers are over here. Think we can find a spot to park? Park, not, of course, not underneath the light. Ah, I am in the trigger, so that all works on out. Uh, so before we call it an episode, like I said, when I come on in here, trailer manager, and no, no one took it today, but I'm pretty sure someone will. Uh, the other trailer, that's been utilized 84% of the time. And of course, right now, uh, Tori is the one taking you out for a drive wherever he's going with it. Uh, but the reefer trailer, as soon as someone picks it up, uh, they'll be making more money, wherever it might be. Uh, but right now, if you're wondering where we are, we are actually here, uh, just north of Twin Falls which I believe we were at not long ago. Uh, we got to go to Ketchum. Oh, no, uh, we're going to go through Ketchum. Or is that where we're going? I forgot where we're going. It might be Ketchum, but why is this like another hour and a half? Am I going to an odd location? I don't remember. Uh, but looks like I, I got to visit uh, Pocatello, Salem, uh, Lewiston, and yeah, uh... My French is not that good. Deline? Deline? Sure, uh, you can see it. Uh, that's where we got to visit those those cities right there. Uh, yeah, is it? Is it? Is that where we're going here? Yeah, we're going to catch them. And we're going to catch them tomorrow, next episode. Uh, so that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, like I said, we're going to sleep through the night, wake up in the morning, got about an, another hour to get there, hour, an hour and a half. So we should get there by 7.30. And they expect it by 9 a.m., so it should not, not, be, not be much of a problem, I think. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching, as always. I'll catch you again right here in American Truck Simulator with Realistic Economy. But until then, have a good one.